I'm Lydia Deacon and I work for West Country Rivers Trust. In this series of films we'll talk you through signing up to our West Country Citizen Science Investigation Scheme. Hello and I'm Simon Browning, I work at West Country Rivers Trust too and I'm just here to tell you a little bit about the CSI scheme. Uh, it started five years ago and our aim really is to get people out monitoring their local rivers all across the West Country. We have 850 plus water bodies to look after and a lot, a lot of those don't get any other monitoring if, if you don't do it. So um, yeah, please help out and watch these set of videos and uh, that'll help you get started. For the West Country Rivers Trust CSI scheme, we have thousands of surveys carried out over the, over the years and, and getting on for a, a thousand already this year. Um, so there's just, I've just got a few tips here to help you make the most of the data, um, record it in the most accurate way and help us streamline the approvals process. The first thing is to make sure that you have the grid reference, time and date on the survey. We can't use the data if we don't know when or where it's from. There's a number of ways of finding the grid reference. Uh, you can click on the map on the survey entry data entry screen on Cartoffer or perhaps use an app on your phone. But we need it, we need it there. If there's any doubt, ask us where, where you are. Um, if you can, fill out all the fields on the form. It's not necessary, but we can't assume that if you don't tick anything, you've not seen any wildlife or you've seen no wildlife. It's a slightly different thing. So if you can, if you don't see any wildlife, make sure to tick the none box and the same with pollution and uh, problem plants. Um, if you can, take some photographs and we get quite a few where the photographs aren't uploaded fully so make sure whenever you're uploading it you wait till the photograph is fully uploaded before you submit the survey. Um, another thing is to make sure that each survey only contains the information that you saw on that survey um, occasion if you like. So sometimes people will record every bit of wildlife they've ever seen at a site. I know it's tempting uh, but if you can just record what's, what you see on the survey that's fine. You can always, if, you, if you're out one day and you see something amazing like a water bowl or an otter, you can always record that as a separate survey, um, but make sure it gets its own time, date and location again. Um, when you're estimating the width and the depth and the flow speed of the river, try and do that at the same place. Otherwise you'll get misleading results if you take the width and depth at a shallow, slow moving bit and then the velocity at a faster, faster part of the river. Um, the, the new TDS meters, the total dissolved solids meters, they do take quite a while to stabilize the temperature or for the temperature to reach the temperature of the water. So make sure that you've given it a couple of minutes and check that the reading isn't changing when you take the uh, result. Uh, the phosphate uh, test kit, uh, we're looking for a color change in the tube against the color squares on the, on the pot. Nothing to do with the strip. So when you take the strip out, pop it in your bag or in your pocket, and read the colour change in the tube itself. And then um, be careful not to uh, record pollution when it's actually a natural, um, a natural feature. So some people confuse kind of collapsing riverbanks with natural erosion of riverbanks. I think the collapsing riverbanks is particularly important in urban areas or where there's any infrastructure, roads or walls or uh, railway lines that's in danger of being uh, undermined. So uh, bear that in mind too.